this has to be the most highly requested video to date. Yes, today I am doing the spicy neutrals video. If you're not familiar with the term spicy neutrals, I coined this last year to describe this particular genre of eyeshadow that I am quite fond of. It is a desaturated, neutral-ish eyeshadow that has something special and exciting to it. Now, a lot of these are duochromes or multichromes, so by the very nature of the pigment, they're not going to be completely void of color. So if you're looking for truly neutral eyeshadows, this is not the video for you. This is for the neutral lover who wants to dabble in something fun, who wants to spice up their looks, is looking for something a little bit more toned down in terms of the actual saturation of the colors to wear maybe on an everyday basis or to pair with your neutral palettes. So I have these separated by brand and then I'm gonna compare them in a way that makes sense towards the end of the video. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, first up we have Cleona. Cleona is a great brand to check out for spicy neutrals, by the way. I just pulled my six favorites, but honestly, I have enough in my collection that I can do a whole separate video on the rest of my spicy neutrals because while they may not be my favorites, they may be something you're into since we all don't have the exact same taste. Let me know if that's something you'd wanna see in a future video. First up, we have Cobblestone. Anything with an asterisk was sent to me in PR, by the way. So this has a grungy great base and it shifts pink to gold to green. This is not one I would have thought to pick up on my own, but it is the perfect romantic, but a little bit grungy, but also approachable eyeshadow. It has a little bit of texture to it, but I wouldn't say it's not user friendly. It still has that nice sheen to it, not super sparkly or anything. This is part of their Earth Vibrant collection. Here is Cathedral. This is part of the pastel multi-chrome line from Cleona, and it has a very smooth finish, almost like a veil. Think of it as not too shiny, not sparkly or anything, just a finely milled, small particle size. It is quite similar to Cobblestone. It has that pink to gold to green shift you see here. The main difference is that finish and texture, and also the base has more depth to it in Cathedral. Opulent has a plummy base and it shifts from a gold to green to teal, but definitely more of a subdued gold. Where this really stands out is the texture and finish. This is part of their glitter multi-chrome line and it has, as you can see compared to the other two, much more high impact finish. The particle size is quite a bit larger than the other two and it has that sparkle going on. So definitely be aware of that before you pick it up, but this is just, it packs such a punch, but it's still kind of soft in a way, if that makes sense. Carving is part of their glitter multi-chrome line and this is probably one of the more colorful ones so to speak it has a grungy brown base and it shifts from green to teal to blue and a little bit of purple from a harsh angle this one i recently mentioned in my multi-chrome recommendations for beginners video because i think it is quite an approachable shade it does have a bit of texture and sparkle to it given that it is part of their glitter multi-chrome line but i do think it's easy to work with it's one of the first multi-chromes i've ever had in my collection and i've never had any issues with it personally as you can see, there is some color to it from the pigment that shifts, but if you were to compare this to a actual vibrant colorful shade, you'd see how relatively subdued it is. Next up, we have Chandelier, which is definitely my most used shade from Cleona, as you can see by the amount of pan I have, which says a lot because Cleona eyeshadow, I think, have more product than most other eyeshadows. I find it to be one of the most versatile stained glass collection eyeshadows from Cleona because it can be used as a topper, can be used as an inner corner, can be used as a highlight, can be used all over the lid. Truly, I feel like the possibilities are endless with this one. I, as you can see, it is quite similar to carving in terms of the shifting pigment. It goes from that like teal to blue to a tiny bit of purple from a harsh angle. So if you're not a huge multi-chrome person, I would hesitate to recommend both. I would say just pick which one is more appealing to you if you want this sort of thing. I personally am happy I have both, but I'm a huge multi-chrome girly, so take that with a grain of salt. The texture and finish are pretty much the same too. Grisaille is one I talk about all the time, but it was a no-brainer for me to include this in this video. I treasure this little eyeshadow so much. It's described as having a terracotta base. I would say it's more of like a muted red. It feels like it leans a little bit cooler to me, but anyway, it has once again those similar shifting pigments from teal to blue to purple as the two above. Has that same texture and finish as well. This one has such a juicy, wet looking finish. I love it so much. Makes a great one and done. I do want to give another shout out to Glam Girl 09 who mentioned in one of her recent videos that abrasion from Cleona is what she expected Grisaille to be on her medium skin tone with olive undertones. So I have them side by side here from one of my previous videos. Honorable mention to abrasion. While Grisaille is my favorite, I think if you have a medium or deep skin tone, check out abrasion. 
I'm going to link her video as well so you can see what they look like swatched side by side. Here are all the six Cleona shades together. I will put up labels in case you'd like to screenshot this for future reference. Okay, this next group are all from Shine by SD. The top three are from my collaboration with Shine by SD, the Earthborn collection. I feel like I could have actually included more, but I stuck to three just for the sake of this not turning into like a promotion video for my club. I mean, I have enough of that between my Instagram and my other YouTube videos, so I figured let me just stick to three for the sake of this video. So the first one we have here, and oh, I just want to say all the Earthborn shades have like a semi-sheer base, so they really all can work with neutral shades because you can control the opacity. So anyway, first up we have Verdigree. This has a desaturated sagey green base and it shifts from like a rose gold to gold to green and a teal from a very harsh angle. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see in this lighting. It's a little overexposed, but this one is my perfect specimen for a spicy neutral because it has a hint of color but it pairs basically with literally any color and it will kind of like adapt to it next up is crown flash this is probably the most approachable in terms of like tone and saturation has a very pale rose gold that shifts to gold and green and it has flecks of red or hot pink in it i'm gonna include a clip of it in natural lighting because that's where these shifts show up the best which i guess is good because that's the more likely scenario where you're gonna be seen in it shine by sd eyeshadows all have a drier texture which can work to your benefit if you have oily or hooded lids i actually prefer a drier texture but just something to be aware of with these eyeshadows Sundog has a very muted like periwinkle grayish base and it shifts from orange to gold and green from a very harsh angle. I've actually had a few friends mention that this to them shows up as like a perfect melt into your skin type shade on their eyes like especially i have a couple friends with a medium skin tone who have mentioned that iridescent show up kind of ashy on them but then this shade somehow works so just in case you are looking for a shade like that you might be interested in this it doesn't make sense to me because if you look at it in the pan it looks very cool tone but i guess it does work like that anyway this has a very smooth shiny finish and it is not textured or sparkly it just has that kind of like sheen to it next up we have break of dawn this is a very special shade to me it was one of my very first multi-chromes ever and it actually is the inspiration for the shade verdigree which you may have heard from me before so they're gonna look quite similar break of dawn has a very sheer peachy base but as you can see those shifts are quite similar it goes from that like rose gold to gold to green and teal from a harsh angle verdigree is a little bit more punchy in terms of how it shows up but Break of Dawn is more of like the sheer like wash counterpart to it. Electrifying is definitely the most spicy of these spicy neutrals. It's going to show up a little bit more vibrant here than the others. But in person, I swear, if you compare it to like a truly colorful shade, you'll see it has that little bit of grounded nature to it. Anyway, this is like a reddened bronze, shifts to orange, gold, and green, and it has all these flecks of sparkle in them that I think makes it so special. They're like silver sparkles that contrast against that warm base and shift. Breakthrough is one of the more recent additions to my collection. This is from their Hidden Gems expansion, which was just recently released. This has a true brown base, and it shifts to like a purple, I guess. It's hard to describe what it looks like in person. But it has these green and other colored sparkles throughout it, so it just has a lot of dimension for being a shade that doesn't really have much texture. Here are all the Shine by SD shades swatched together, so you can screenshot if you would like. Next we have Davina. I have three options from Davina for you to take a look at, so let me go ahead and get into those. First we have Centaurus. This is like a bronzy, warm leaning shade. This is such a good one. I love this for summer, like achieving that bronzy vibe. It definitely has a lot of warmth to it and it shifts from a bronze to orange to gold. The shifts are not super pronounced. Mystic Moon Pie is a classic from Davina. It has that truly neutral brown base and the sparkles shift from teal to blue to purple. And on me, this shows up as like more of a silver leaning shade. I don't know why if it has to do with something with my skin tone or what, but this does come across as the most like truly neutral blue brown type shade, so to speak. So I'm not sure how it shows up on different skin tones, but just something to be aware of. Next is Fire Hunt, which is part of their Moonscapes collection. I've had a tumultuous relationship with this one. 
at first i didn't really like it see how i'm taking like the tiniest amount when i go to swatch it because it is wow it is intensely chunky and textured like you really need to go out of your way to make sure you use the tiniest amount unless you want that super thick thick chunky look like i'm gonna apply right here in a thick layer you see how the difference is so pronounced it's just if you want like a wash of sparkles you can use this for that and i actually really enjoy the effect but it does take a little bit of elbow grease to get that effect you have to really use a tiny amount and gently tap it on ever so slightly with your finger so anyway here are the three divina shades swatched together with labels on them I have four options from Glam Shop. I'm including this because I know some of my followers are from the EU and this is an option that may be more accessible to you. So anyway, let's go ahead and start. First, I have Satellite. This is one of their Ultra Pearls and this has a bronzy but still pretty neutral base and then it shifts from very slight shift from like a gold to teal. I wouldn't say it's one of the more shifty ones. I think what makes this special is the texture and finish. It is very, very sparkly, but not overly textured. I love the way this looks on the eyes. It's definitely a staple for me. Tomback is another one of my favorites. This has like a certain je ne sais quoi about it. Like, is it warm? Is it cool? What's going on here? It doesn't have too much of a base, but I love, love, love this for a one and done. It feels like it has a cooler toned base, but then you see with those shifts, it's like warm. It has a similar shift to Satellite, actually. You can see from an angle, they are quite similar, but again, that like base or primary pigment is different. One is warmer, one's cooler, but I wouldn't say either is necessarily warm or cool. <laughs> Frozen Brown is one of their velvet or velour shades, and this is another staple for me. I love to use this all over my eyelid and tap something on top. One of my favorite easy looks to do actually is to put Frozen Brown down and then put Tom back on top. It is so dimensional and balanced and like spicy neutral. It's like the epitome of a spicy neutral look in my opinion. So if you have both of these shades or two similar shades, definitely try using them together in a look. You will love the effect. Next, Space Dust. This is another one of their Velvet Velour shades, similar to Frozen Brown, but it's like more of a red and mauve type of situation. It's still grounded, but it has a little bit more saturation to it. Also has some very subtle, lighter sparkles going on. Here are the four Glam Shop shades swatched together. I have the most shades from Terra Moons simply because the largest volume of eyeshadow in my collection is from Terra Moons. Also, I do think they do a great job of doing these spicy neutral type shades. So I'm going to go ahead and do these in two groups of six. First one we've got here is Terra Borealis. This is one I've mentioned recently in my blue brown video. This has that true terracotta base and then it has sparkles that ship from teal, blue, purple, not unlike Grisaille. This is warmer and a little bit more like terracotta as opposed to a cooler red. Of course, I have to include Enceladus. This is one of my all-time favorites ever. I love it so much. Okay, so this is like, it looks pretty teal in the pan, but you see when it's swatched out, it is this pale, almost silvery, but still has that warmth to it. It is so special and beautiful. I love that it can be sheared out. It has these spicy purple and like silver sparkles going on. There's so much dimension and nuance to this. It is just so good. Prism Skies has a cool tone plummy base and then it has soft gold green teal shifting sparkles. This is quite similar to the shade Shattered Stars. I'll link a video where I have them compared on my eyes. This has a little bit more texture and dimension to it, so I prefer it of the two, but you definitely do not need both. Next up, we have Atomic Division. This is another one that I feel like reads kind of gray or silver to me, but it also has so much going on at the same time. I feel like it has almost a blue base, and then it shifts from orange to gold to green. It's just very puzzling to me, and I think that's what makes it so exciting and fun to use and like experiment with other tones. Similar vibes to Prism Skies in a way, but obviously they have different tones, like undertones and effects. This is one that I grew to appreciate over time as I started to use it more. Mocha Twilight is a really interesting one because it is quite opaque and it does have a sparkly finish but to me it does not feel textured at all it feels very slick and smooth so I don't really understand how that works it does feel more emollient than a lot of their other shadows so if you're subject to creasing be aware of that dark side is a really fun one it's a black really really sparkly shade I don't recommend this if you're a beginner or if you're not into like more editorial type situations because 
it's you would need to apply a lot of the product over like a glitter glue to get a truly opaque layer of this it's more for fun creative looks i would say but i really enjoy using this i have a lot of fun using it in different looks here are all the tara moon shades swatched together with labels for the second group we're starting off with a banger this is palladium it's like a rose gold shimmer doesn't have any shift or anything what makes this truly special is the finish it's so sparkly and foiled and reflective the three shimmers that come in this formula i definitely recommend picking them up for a spicy neutral lover i didn't include ccm because it's a like gold but i included one of the other ones it is so good next up hyperion this is so so insanely smooth and shiny it is like butter it's so reflective and finely milled has a black base and it shifts from a very pale like rose gold i guess to gold to green it is most approachable black base multichrome i know of but rubidium this is in that same formula as palladium just so foiled and sparkly this is described as i believe a taupe gold which i would say is pretty accurate it's definitely the most neutral reading of the three in this formula next up carina nebula this has a deep purple base and then it shifts from orange to gold to green it definitely looks more colorful in the pan but i feel like when you apply it it does come across so muted and grungy and definitely in that spicy neutral family really enjoy this one i find it to be the most approachable in this type of like purple gold situation veil nebula is a classic i've talked about this so many times it has again that like plummy base but then it shifts to gold green teal kind of similar to opulent which i showed you from cleona before but a lot less textured still has that sparkly finish but definitely more user friendly i'm just speculating here but i think veil nebula if you have a deeper skin tone than, than me it would come across like opulent appears on me if that makes sense gamma ray is another underrated special spicy neutral gem in my opinion it's like the warm counterpart to veil nebula it has a warm bronzy base and then it just comes across like this bronze oil slick situation so so beautiful love this for summertime both veil nebula and gamma ray have a sparkly dimensional finish without being overly textured or anything like i'd say they're both user friendly okay and here's the second group of six from terra moon swatched together with labels next to them Okay, and the last two before I get into some comparisons, I have two one-offs from two different brands, so I'm just going to swatch them together. I'm going to start off with this one from Shall We Makeup. This is called Moon Village, and this is kind of similar to Carina Nebula, which I showed you before. It's a jeweled multichrome, but it does not have a black base, so it just has a really, really shiny, very finely milled, not textured at all, just has that really shiny, like I said, jeweled finish. This has a tiny bit of color to it, but I think it does exist in that spicy neutral realm because it's not too strong of any particular color. This one is just really interesting and exciting to me, and I think it's so fun to pair with different tones because it, like I said, it doesn't really lean too much into any particular color. Last, we have Blue Hole Prism from Misha, which is a K-Beauty brand. This one is one of the most subtle, but something about it is so, so appealing to me. I love this for a one and done on my skin tone because from certain angles, it almost completely disappears. But then from straight on or where the light hits it, you see that very soft, like silvery blue pigment. I find it to be so flattering, which is not something I always care about. Like, I just like to have fun with makeup. But sometimes if I just want a cute moment, I enjoy using this. So here are the two one-off shades swatched together. Now I'm going to go ahead and get into some comparisons.
So that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know what are your favorite spicy neutrals in the comments. Did you add any of these to your wish list? Do you have any? Do you dislike any of these? Let's just chat about it in the comments. Love to have a discussion going on down there. But yeah, other than that, I will see you in the next one. Bye.